three, two. Good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting of June 13th. I'll call the meeting to order and ask that you all rise for the singing of our national anthem. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you to our very own Tennille Towns for the singing of our national anthem and to the National Film Board for the images of our country. Uh, a couple items to start us off today that are always fun. We have two proclamations today. First being Pride Month for June 2022. And I see a few members from the uh, community who are here to read the proclamation and then I'll hand it to one of you once we're done. So Pride Month, June 2022, whereas lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer Pride Month is celebrated each year in the month of June to honor the 1969 Stonewall Uprising in Manhattan a tipping point for the gay liberation movement. And whereas pride celebrations are held around the world in June for LGBT, uh, LGBTQ plus communities to celebrate the freedom to be themselves, including straight allies, whereas the city of Grand Prairie is welcoming, inclusive, and diverse community, and an exceptional place to live, learn, work, play, and raise a family, and recognizes the importance of equality and freedom. And whereas the city of Grand Prairie's LGBTQ plus community is a vital part of all industries and professions and contributes to a stronger community. And whereas the city of Grand Prairie is strengthened by and thrives upon the rich diversity of ethnic, cultural, racial, gender, and sexual identities of all its residents, all of which contribute to the vibrant character of our city. And whereas it is important imperative that young people in our community, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity, feel valued, safe, empowered, and supported by their peers, educated, educators, and community leaders. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Jackie Clayton, on behalf of the City Grand Prairie Council and the people of Grand Prairie, do by here proclaim June to be Pride Month in the City of Grand Prairie. So with that, we know that there's been many activities. Uh, it may seem for those who are watching a little bit awkward that we're doing it June 13th, but there's been so many activities uh, that have been happening, uh, especially last week. Uh, it just was the perfect time to actually officially proclaim it. We've already done our flag raising and our, our sidewalk painting and, and the white party happened and the family carnival, but uh, now it is official. I'm just going to ask Ms. Fisher or whoever's here to come up and we will uh, just present the proclamation.
All right, so thank you on that. Moving on to item 3.2, the Recreation and Parks Month proclamation. June is Recreation and Parks Month 2022. In Alberta, the city of Grand Prairie, we are fortunate to have a variety of recreation and park systems, providing countless recreational opportunities for all residents and visitors from around the world. And whereas recreation and parks enhance a quality of life, active living, leisure education, and lifelong learning, helps people live happier and longer, develops skills and positive self-image in children and youth, develops creativity and builds healthy bodies and positive lifestyles and enhances overall mental health and well-being. And whereas recreation and parks build family unity and social capital, strengthens volunteer and community development, enhances social interaction, creates community pride and vitality, promotes equality, equity, inclusivity, sensitivity, and understanding to cultural diversity and fosters a sense of belonging. And whereas the benefits provided by a recreation and parks program and services reduce health care and social service costs, uh, serve to boost the economy, economic renewal and sustainability, enhance property values, decrease vandalism, attract new businesses, increase tourism and curb employee absenteeism, and whereas our parks, open spaces, and trails ensure ecological sustainability, provide space to enjoy nature, help maintain clean air and water, preserve plant and animal wildlife, and whereas all levels of government, the voluntary sector, and private enterprise throughout the province participate in the planning, development, and operation of recreation and parks program, programs, services, and facilities. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Jackie Clayton, in recognition of the benefits and values that recreation, parks, and leisure services provide, do hereby designate the month of June as Recreation and Parks Month in the City of Grand Prairie as well. And I encourage all residents to recognize and celebrate the benefits derived year-round from quality recreation and parks resources at the local, regional, and provincial levels. So, so thank you. Two big proclamations, so thank you everyone for your patience as I stumble my way through those. Anyways, uh, moving on to traditional business, item number four, the adoption of the previous council minutes, looking to ca uh, Councillor Blackmore. I would move that council adopt the minutes of the city council meeting held May 30th, 2022 as presented. Thank you for that. That motion is in order. I will call the question. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Moving on to item 4.1, City Council meeting of today. I'm looking to Councillor Bressy. Um, sorry, are we on item 7.3? Nope, we're on item 5, the adoption sorry. of the agenda, please. Okay, sorry, um, so I would move the council adopt the agenda with the additions item 7.2, public member appointments, coordinating care camps, advisory committee, and item 7.3, recreation trail management advisory committee, council member appointments. Perfect, and thank you being, for being nimble on that. Uh, I will call the question now. Moving on to, sorry, apologies, I'll wait for that. And that carries unanimously. Moving on to item six, this is the opportunity for delegations to come to council, speak to council um, at the 3 p.m. session of our meeting. You do not need to let us know you're coming. Uh, we do ask uh, if you plan to attend the evening portion of our meeting, that you go online, fill out the correspondence, uh, or the form rather, that uh, gives us a notice ahead of time that you are coming. Um, so I will now ask if there is anyone here as a delegation to speak to council that isn't part of a development permit application. And if not, we are gonna move on and assume there's no delegations. I know there's no one online watching tonight. So, uh, or that has called in, I'm sure there's lots watching, but no one that's called in for this. Moving on to item number seven, 
under reports. 7.1, this is development permit PL220208. Uh, it is a development permit in regards to an emergency shelter. And I'll look to Mr. Tobin for introduction, please. Administration received a development permit application for the construction of an emergency shelter, uh, the development permit PL220208. Uh, through the mayor, the, the previous council directions on this was on January 25th, 2021, City Council adopted land use bylaw amendment C slash 1260131, which rezoned the site to a DC and this is the site here, a DC 27 site specific direct control district for the purpose of accommodated, accommodating permanent supported housing. At the January 24th, 2022 council meeting, council approved land use bylaw amendment C1260149 to add the emergency shelter classification of use to the DC 27 site direct specific direct control district. Uh, the subject property is located to the northwestern corner of 110th Street and 107th Avenue intersection and is bounded by the Margaret Edgson Manor directly to the north, the new hospital further north, Great Northern Casino and a hotel further to the east, the Encore Suites, Kitty Corner to the southeast, residential condominium developments to the south and the southwest, with vacant land to the west and the northwest. Uh, the site plan itself, the proposed construction of the emergency shelter is on land comprised of 11010107A Avenue and is a portion of the former 107 Avenue Road right away, as you can see by the dash line along here. The subdivision of the subject property lot eight was approved by the subdivision authority, but due to extended delays, it has not been registered at land titles office, which is a requirement of section 60.1 of the city's land use bylaw. Uh, so this is a site photo standing on where the site will go, uh, where the building is proposed to go, the Sunrise House, the uh, emergency shelter just north is the Margaret Edson Manor and further north is the hospital. Uh, with respect to council's focus area and strategic directions, a new ma a major emergency shelter aligns with city council's strategic objective as an inclusive and caring community by providing safe and supportive environment for you. Uh, there are approval of this application would have no direct economic impacts, nor uh, environmental impacts and approval of the application, however, would provide an essential emergency service for youth who require a safe and supportive environment. There's another site, fo site photo of the Encore Suites to the southeast. Excuse me, uh, land use by last C slash 1260, uh, Section 60.1 subdivision of land. If an application for a development permit involves a subdivision of land, no permit will be issued until a plan of subdivision being a plan of survey prepared in accordance with Land Titles Act for the land has been registered at the Lands Title Act Office. An emergency shelter classification of use is listed as a discretionary use in the DC 27 site specific direct control district and is defined as an establishment provided temporary accommodation to individuals who are in immediate need of emergency accommodation on an overnight basis. This use requires a direct control district, which we're talking about a direct control district, DC 27. May include a combination of rooms and dormitories and. There's a lot in this definition which is included in the report and I don't see the need to go through every one of them. 
uh, if that's okay with the mayor. So, stakeholder engagement. Basically, uh, there were, the application went out for the stakeholder engagement and we notified, as per city policy, and we notified 44 notices were sent in to the adjacent property landowners, a, a package. At the time of rewriting up this report, administration have not received any correspondence from adjacent property owners in response to the notification. Uh, administration also circulated to various internal departments and external government agencies. No con concerns or objections have been received. And since the report was submitted, we have still not received any objections or correspondence from adjacent landowners. Financial implications with respect to this development permit application, there are none with respect to the development permit application. So summary conclusion, emergency shelter is listed as a discretionary use in the DC 27 district and city council is development authority. The applicant is proposing to construct an emergency shelter for youth. The property in question is in the DC 27 district as is required and the proposed emergency shelter meets the intent of the definition and all the requirements of the land use by last C1260. Therefore, administration recommends that City Council waive Section 60.1 with respect to subdivision of land as per the land use bylaw C-1260 and approve the construction of a new emergency shelter as indicated in Appendix 5, Draft Development Permit 220208. That Perfect. concludes, Madam Mayor. Thanks, Mr. Tobin. So, Council, an opportunity for questions for administration. There are also uh, delegates here from the proposal if there's specific questions, which isn't really what we're here for, but um, if there were questions, I'll move those to after questions for administration on this development permit. So, Councillor Blackmore. So, just a point of clarification. The only issue standing between uh, a development permit and this development is the fact that it's not been registered with land titles? Mr. Tobin? Uh, through the mayor, yes, in fact, uh, that is the case. It is, hasn't been registered at land titles and according to uh, section 60.1, typically we would not approve. In fact, I don't know one that I have approved, but because it's registered, uh, there is no immediate concern. And do we have any idea how far behind land titles is? like? My understanding, they're like three to four months behind. Okay, thank you. Great, Councilor Berg. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. So we're just waiving this, just so that they can break ground rather than waiting for the paperwork. Correct? Mr. Tobin. Uh, through the mayor, yes, so that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, it, it has been approved. It's an approved subdivision, so it's just the paperwork. Thank you. All right, Councilor Bosch. I'll move this if anybody is. Just one last check for council. No further questions for administration. Uh, Councilor Lerners, and then I'll come back to you for business rising, Councilor Bosch. Yeah, and I, I won't get in the way of that motion, but I, I may look at another motion depending on the answer here. Is this is this problem? I I doubt is not. Is, I doubt it's going to go away. Uh, it was three days or four days for forever and ever, and now it's been three or four months for a while now and that's you know this doesn't just pose a problem at this level you know you could be people wanting to put basements in in the fall because of because of the winter conditions and we can't because now that subdivision is not registered for three four months so i may make a motion to uh, have have standing committee look at um you know looking at that and seeing if that authority can be delegated or if it can be uh, find other ways around that. So I'll, I will, I'll probably add that, but unless you think there's no other instances where this will, this could come back and bite us in the future. Mr. Tobin, any feedback on that? Uh, to the mayor, no, I don't see any, uh, issues of bite back, you know, for biting us in the future. It's a DC 27 district. So it's council's approval. Uh, it can't be appealed if council makes a decision, only the process. So if I misinterpreted the process, uh, of, of council, 
uh, waiving 60.1, then I guess it could be appealed, but there is no issue because it's already been approved. The subdivision yeah, I, I'm not talking about this one specifically. I'm talking about this, yeah. this, any development in town that could come forward that with the subdivision and the development uh, is, is, yeah. Mr. Tobin, or sorry, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, yes, we're aware of this as an issue and we have uh, had some discussions with industry. Uh, we don't see it as an, uh, an issue that's gonna necessarily present itself with, let's say, uh, construction of houses at this point. Um, so we're hoping that the land titles issue resolves itself before we get to that point, but we are prepared to work with industry to allow construction to happen in a similar uh, fashion as we're doing now. So, yeah, so that may require some discretion or something that we could delegate or do whatever. So yeah, I might still do that and then you can say it's not necessary after the review, but anyway, sorry. All right, thanks Councilor Nairs. Councilor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I agree with you, Councilor Lenners. That's a good idea. Uh, I move Council Wave Section 60.1 of the Land Use Bylaw C-1260 and approved development permit PL-220208 for the construction of an emergency shelter as indicated in Appendix Number 5, Development Permit PL-220208. Perfect. Comments or questions on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. So congratulations, you're good to go. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Councillor Learners. So I would like to make a, a motion. The council direct uh, to the proper standing committee that they look at uh, section 60.1 to see if revisions can be incorporated to expedite the relevant development permit processes. Understandable, Mr. Johnson, you're good. Comments or questions from council in regards to the motion? Okay, I will call the question. I'll just wait for legislative services. I have a minute to catch up. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll leave it at that to wait for in case there's an uprising, but yeah. <laughs> keep my powder dry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll call the question. To refer to the appropriate standing committee to look at section 60.1 to see if revisions can be incorporated to expedite the relevant development per permit process. Uh, I guess a question for administration on that motion or for council for consideration. Do we want a timeline on this or is this a process going forward? Councillor Lanners. Well, I don't know. It's a, it's an, I wouldn't say it's a median issue, but it's a you know, an issue that's present right now. So um, I would like to have it come back in the next... For discussion. Okay. The discussion, the next, perhaps the next standing committee. If they've already had some discussions around it, it shouldn't be all that complicated to come up with some recommendations. Okay. Councillor O'Connor. Yes. Uh, does the uh, motion have to include the reason that it's because of delays of uh, getting uh, uh, approval at, from the province? I think that we've had a fair enough con conversation on this and administration is well aware of the issues, so they'll okay. consider it. Okay, just from a clarity. Yeah, perfect. All right, seeing no further comments or questions, I will call the question. Nope. There we go. There we go. That carries unanimously. Moving on to item 7.2, public member appointment. Uh, there is a motion in your package to appoint 
seven members for the Coordinated Care Campus Advisory Committee for a term ending of December 31st, 2023. I don't know uh, if there's any introduction needed to this other than um, we did establish the criteria for this committee. We went to the public and looked for applicants. And now at this point, um, these are the names in front of us and I will look to Councillor Blackmore for introduction or for business arising. Um, I'm really pleased to see that this uh, standing committee uh, is being formed and I think it'll serve uh, valuable, uh, have valuable input to the, uh, to the building. So I would be um, happy to ask council to appoint Deborah Jones, Joseph Redhead, Crystal Smith, Lionel Fry, Nicole Simono, Elmer Spilchen, and Brian John to the Coordinated Care Campus Committee, Advisory Committee for term ending December 31st, 2023. Perfect, thank you for that motion. Comments or questions on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Councillor Thiessen in favor. Sorry, I got kicked out. There we go. That carries unanimously. Moving on to item 7.3. Um, I will introduce this. As you recall, Alberta Environment and Parks came to council probably about a month ago to discuss um, a um, advisory committee that they were striking and looking for input from uh, surrounding municipalities in regards to the Wapiti Rec and Trail Management. This advisory committee will include um, representatives from the City of Grand Prairie, the County of Grand Prairie, as well as the MD of Greenview. Um, I would like to, uh, if somebody could make a motion that um, that uh, both myself and Councillor Bressy be appointed to this committee. Um, and we will add this to our list of other committees, which then in turn will allow either myself or Councillor Bressy to update Council on, on the activities of that advisory committee. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I'd move that Council approve uh, Councillor Bressy and Mayor Jackie Clayton as our representatives on the Wapiti River Recreation Management Corridor Group. Thank you for that. Comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call the question. That carries unanimously. Moving on to committee business under item 8.1, the Community Services Committee meeting held June 7th. I will look to Councillor Thiessen for introduction. Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. I would move that Council adopt the minutes of the Community Services Committee meeting held Tuesday, June 7th, 2022, as presented. All right, uh, call the question. Carries unanimously. Councillor Thiessen, you have an item of business. I sure do. Just uh, one item of business today. And for that, I would move that Council approve the renewal of the Regional Recreation Coordinator position for 2023 at a 0.75 FTE and direct administration to proceed with funding as recommended. Just speaking to this motion, uh, this, is, uh, this is a position that was created when we created the Regional Recreation uh, Group. Uh, and this position helps us to carry out those duties. 
between our six partner municipalities. Uh, it's only a one year renewal contract and our total contribution of this, uh, including the salary, uh, is roughly about 77,000 as presented at committee. So a small, a small price to pay for a lot of work, a lot of good work to be done around the region. So I would encourage council to support this motion. Thank you for that. Comments or questions on the motion? Seeing no one, please vote. That carries unanimously. Councillor Thiessen, any highlights from your meeting? Uh, yes, just a couple here. Uh, today we had a couple delegations. One was from the Center for Creative Arts to highlight what our contributions did to help benefit the center and a presentation from the Executive Director of the Grand Prairie Regional Volunteer Services Bureau to talk to us about trends and the issues in our nonprofit and charitable sector and uh, give us a little advice on how we might be able to offset those. Uh, as far as city operations, I uh, just wanted to let people know that all of our seasonal assets are now open. That includes our Bears Ball Golf Course, our outdoor swimming pool, um, our sandy dumps, and, well, all the disc golf courses. That will make Dylan happy. I don't think they ever closed. Uh, also, the Heritage Village, uh, adjoined to the Grand Prairie Museum uh, down in Muskocipi Park, is now open uh, Tuesday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., so be sure to bring your family along and uh, take a trip through the past. It's also open on weekends from 12 till 6. And finally, transit. Uh, we have migrated to the new paratransit software system, and uh, it happened last week on the day of committee. Uh, clients will have the ability to book their own trips on the web starting, well, last week, and using a mobile device starting in phase two, which would be August 2nd. Uh, they can sign up for alerts, which would let them know how close their transit is to them the day before, 15 minutes before they arrive to the house, and so on. So this is a, a beneficial service to our, our I guess, uh, mobility-challenged uh, residents uh, and to some of our other transit users who are off the beaten path of where our normal transit uh, rides by. And that's all I have to report for. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item point two, the corporate services meeting of June 7th, and I will look to Councillor Lanners for introduction. Thank you for that. Um, I guess we'll start out with the, um, uh, I'll make a motion that Council adopt the minutes of the corporate services committee meeting held June 7th, 2022 as presented. Perfect. That motion is in order. I will call the question. Please vote. Councillor Resty in favor? Oh, it just popped up. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Lenners, you have one, uh, one item of business. We do. So every decade or so, city crests and flag registration, and um, there didn't seem to be an immediate uh, push to, to change anything, but there was some um, a request to create some surety in, around our, our branding and our city logos. And, um, and to do that, part of that is to uh, have the application essentially uh, trademarking it with the Canadian Heraldic Authority. So I will actually, in that note, I will make the motion that Council direct administration to submit an application to the Canadian Heraldic Authority for the registration of current City of Grand Prairie emblems, including the City Crest, City Flag, Enforcement Services Crest, and the Fire Department Crest. All right, that motion is in order. Comments or questions on that motion? Seeing none, I will call the question. Councillor O'Connor, how do you vote? I vote in favor. I got punted. Thank you. Councillor Bressy in favor. Thank you. Mayor Clayton in favor. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Lerner, any highlights from your meeting? I was just curious if punting Mike O'Connor is like kicking the cat. 
But um, having said that, uh, meeting highlights. Uh, there was really only one that was um, um, of, of notice uh, that was, wasn't already discussed, and that is that uh, uh, kind of in the same tone that we had regarding our last development firm, is uh, we're struggling a little bit with land titles, um, registering plans, or not plans, but um, sales of homes. And um, so it's typically about a three or four month delay right now. So if you've purchased a property um, in the last um, month or so, and, um, and you are not getting a tax notice, um, please be aware that um, we're still expecting you to pay the taxes on your newly acquired property. And um, you know there'll be the odd fees should that not occur. Having said that, I do think that the city has been very diligent in sending out letters via of, of information from the from lawyers around town because I got one myself so I know it's in process but for those that uh, haven't got one yet uh, just a, a caveat around that so and that was basically it on community services great thank you or for that update. services sorry moving along to item point three the protective and social services meeting of June 7th as well I will look to Councillor O'Toole for introduction Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. I move the council adopt the minutes of the Protective and Social Services Committee meeting held June 7th, 2022, as presented. All right, that motion is in order. I'll call the question. Councillor O'Connor in favor. Any highlights from your meeting, Councillor Yes, I can tell you that we had our Direct of Services area report and we had our quarterly report from all of our uh, departments. And with that, uh, we had a department uh, coordinated care campus update on what's going on and what's going to happen in the very near future. Uh, community social development, uh, enforcement services, the fire department, G prep and the RCMP and those full reports are in the package that you get today if you're looking in the on the internet uh, looking at our meeting and those are all in detail there so thank you very much and uh, it was a good positive good meeting thank you Great. thanks for that Councillor O'Toole moving along to item uh, 8.4 the infrastructure and economic development committee meeting of June 7th Councillor O'Connor just trying to get caught up here. Thank you. Oh, it showed up. Anyway, I'd like to move that council adopt the minutes of the Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee meeting held June 7th, 2022, as presented. All right, that motion is in order. Seeing no one in the queue with comments or questions, I will call the question. Please vote. Councillor O'Connor, you had one item of business. Yes, uh, I'd like to uh, have committee uh, recommend council, number one, accept the snow and ice control internal services review report uh, for information, and two, direct administration to conduct community consultation regarding potential service level adjustments costed in table 2.0 and 3.0 of this report, along with neighborhood snow storage, options for identifying priority one bus stops and enforcement options uh, prior to bringing back policy 606 revisions for council consideration in September 2022. And in speaking to this, uh, public engagements uh, surveys are going out this week as we speak and on July 12th and 13th, they'll be holding engagement uh, uh, sessions for people to have input on area of level of how they'd like to see uh, their concern about snow removal, et cetera, in the city. And so I'll ask the question to be called. Perfect. Comments or questions on the motion? Councillor Bressy. Great. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Due to us having to step out for another meeting with the minister, I wasn't able to stick around for most committee meeting. I do see Mr. Carroll in the room. I'm wondering if I might be able to ask a couple of questions. Absolutely. Mr. Carroll, if you wouldn't mind coming forward. Thank 
great. Thanks for thanks for coming down today to be here. Just in case somebody asks you questions, I had to give you <laughs> reasons to come to City Hall. Um, I'm curious. I noticed in the report that there were a lot. There were opportunities to increase service uh, in the report, but I'm wondering if any opportunities to maybe pull back service and find cost savings were considered or explored by administration. Mr. Carroll. Uh, th thanks, through the mayor. Uh, of course, uh, when you're providing service, uh, uh, you know, taking uh, and reducing services uh, is uh, not the way that uh, you, we, we usually like to go. And uh, council and uh, and uh, the uh, public uh, are, uh, you know, keep a keen eye on uh, how we're doing our snow removal. And I think that we tried some service reductions in the past uh, with respect to uh, windrow removal and driveways. And I think uh, most of the uh, council know that uh, we we backtracked on that and. Uh, ended up going back to where the services was. Uh, we, we looked at, although it, you know, it's not included in the report, but uh, we, we talked a lot about you know, hauling snow and, and snow removal uh, and hauling windrows. And uh, there is some direction for us to consult with uh, the public about hauling snow and storing snow in neighborhoods. So we still got a little bit of work to do as, uh, in our final report with, with respect to reducing services, but uh, we hadn't uh, dug too deep down that road uh, but uh, you know, certainly with uh, uh, with our next report, uh, we would uh, look at some of that. Great. If I may, one more question. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. You kind of anticipated my second question, but I'm just curious how the motion, as it's phrased now, that instructs administration to do consultation on snow storage options. How would how would administration interpret this uh, this motion? Would it just be looking at opportunities to? haul more snow or haul the same amount of snow and store just much neighborhoods, just maybe in different ways? Or would it be exploring options to haul less store, less snow and store more snow in the neighborhood? And just show my cards, I'd like us to explore opportunities to haul less snow so that we can find cost savings in some areas of our snow removal budget, but spend more in other parts of our snow removal budget. And I'm curious if that's going to happen as a result of this motion if it gets passed, or if I should be make, moving an amendment to get that explored in public consultation. Mr. Carroll? It's through the mayor, yes. Uh, residential snow hauling uh, is, uh, is kind of a tricky one because um, we don't do much of it. Uh, the only snow that we do haul out of uh, neighborhoods is mainly from uh, piles and cul-de-sacs. And that uh, currently is a, uh, you know, probably the lowest priority uh, 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 the action that we uh, carry out in our snow removal program. It's when pretty much everything else is done, we'll go and remove piles from cul-de-sac. So there's no service standard for it. Uh, we may remove your pile in the cul-de-sac once, we may move, remove it twice, uh, and we may just, you know, if, if the spring is right, let the spring take it away also. Uh, and also uh, with our, our snow removal in the residential areas, that we're very limited as to where we can actually store the snow. And uh, I did do some pricing with respect to uh, hauling all the snow out of residential areas. And, uh, the, the, and there's several challenges that face us, face, uh, us with that. Uh, number one being that uh, having the capacity of somewhere to receive that snow, uh, it would be a significant amount, obviously. And uh, just uh, how, how quickly either the city could gear up with equipment or task industry with uh, the extra uh, the extra uh, action of, uh, you know, plowing the snow and picking it up immediately because obviously there, there, we, we would have nowhere to store it. Uh, it's not like on a priority two road where you can put it into the middle in a, in a, in a windrow for a later pickup. Uh, it would have to be a, an operation where as you plow the snow, you load it into trucks and haul it away. So if you can imagine uh, with uh, the size of the residential areas that we have, the amount of effort that would go into that, uh, some uh, quick calculations, uh, you know, it would be, you know, at least doubling the present snow removal budget to do that. Yeah. So we're obviously looking at other, other options to, uh, uh, to deal with the snow in residential areas. But uh, as I said earlier, uh, areas to store the snow are very limited when we've got, you know, everything else that goes on in neighborhoods with uh, respect to parking and sidewalks and, and uh, fire hydrants, mailboxes, bus stops and everything. It, uh, it, it quickly limits the amount of uh, spots that we can actually put snow. Yeah. Can I respond? Uh, no. <clears throat> uh, Councilor Bressy, I do have other people in the queue, so if it's a follow-up yeah, on, follow on this, yeah. feel free to go ahead. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out if there's opportunities to haul less snow that Council could consider. So I think I heard you say on residential areas, not really, because we really are just doing it when we really have to, because it's a cul-de-sac. What about on 
priority one or two up to if council so desired i know that there'd be phone calls city hall angry about it but in terms of administration's opinion in terms of safety and actually having a functioning road network has there been any conversation about if there might be opportunity to haul less snow from priority roads than we haul right now mr carroll uh, through the mayor um I guess through the years, uh, you know, with uh, with respect to our priority ones and priority twos, uh, priority ones we don't haul a lot. Uh, we were able to uh, we, the, the way the priority ones are constructed, they're they're they have snow storage in mind. So uh, most of the snow gets plowed to the side of the road, and is is just left there uh, for either Mother Nature to pick up or uh, as a very another low priority uh, snow removal item that we do is we may go in and remove some of that snow. Uh, to uh, either make way for, for more storage or at the beginning of the spring cleanup so uh, we don't have to pick up the grit that's left over from that snow. That, again, doesn't have a, a, any kind of service standard attached to it. It's uh, you know, one of those low-priority things that, that uh, keep our forces uh, uh, busy during those times where, where we don't have snow to plow. Um, the priority two roads, certainly uh, there's, there's lots of priority two roads that we, we were able to plow to the side of the road. Depends on the configuration of the road and if there's, no, if there's snow storage available on the side of the road, we will put it on the sides of some of the roads if we got the, a, an opportunity to do that. But uh, you know, probably 80 to 90 percent of the snow on priority two roads is hauled. And uh, you know, we've actively looked for areas to, uh, to uh, store that without hauling. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, but uh, you know that's limited also. Excellent. Thank you very. I appreciate it, Mr. Carroll. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Not a problem. Councilor O'Connor. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, the report that was provided uh, by uh, uh, Mr. Carroll's uh, department is very comprehensive, and I'd recommend that you would go through this report. And there were a lot of recommendations in the report. So kudos out to your department for providing all this. And there's an opportunity uh, and in re reference to hauling snow from the residence area is not going to happen. It's just where we place the snow in, in the area and concern them on some residents. So that's, we're not more trying to add more money to the budget. So uh, I'd like to call the question. Sorry, I have other people. In the room, okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Councillor Bosch. <laughs> thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carroll, for the report that you and your team put out. It is a lot of information, and particularly because we live in this winter city, um, it is probably one of the main points that everybody um, discusses at one point or another within the year. Looking at growth of our community too, as being an economic driver for Alberta, uh, looking forward to how we're going to handle, you know, more snow and more impact on our um, roadways and driveways and, you know, um, parking lots. Um, I think looking at this now is advantageous for us. I am happy about the public con consultation. Uh, we talked briefly about uh, frequently asked questions. I think this will be um, really helpful for our citizens. I know it, it already has helped me just asking my questions and they're the same questions everybody else asks at some point. So I think it's a learning exercise for our community too. And uh, so that, you know, everybody has an opinion, but maybe in one of your questions or opinions that has already been answered. So. I'm looking forward to seeing the public consultation and, and what comes out of that. Just a comment, really. Thanks. Great. Thank you for that comment. Seeing no further questions for you, thank you for coming, Mr. Carroll. I appreciate that. Uh, Council, I have no opportunity for additional questions. All right, last chance for comments or questions on the motion. Seeing none, I'll call the question. I was thinking I was going the other way again. And that carries unanimously. Councillor O'Connor, any highlights from your meeting? Yes, I have some. Sorry, one second. Apologies before we go to highlights. Councillor Bressy. 
Great, thank you. Yeah, uh, Mayor Klein, if you'd allow, I'd like to make a follow-up motion. With sure. This. And um, I'd love to try this out. I move that council direct administration with its uh, policy 606 report coming forward in September 2022 to include options for potential service reduction in the snow removal budget. And just to speak to this, it's, I've got, I don't know if I've got, I think we actually deliver a pretty Cadillac service of snow removal here in the city of Grand Prairie. And I don't know if I've personally got a desire for us to spend more money on snow removal, but I do see parts of our snow removal program that I do think are deficient. Uh, for me, transit stops and things for folks with accessibility issues would be a really big one of those. And for me, when, if we're going to consider additions to our snow removal budget, I'd like to also be able to consider, great, maybe we do just need to add more tax dollars into this, and I'm okay considering that, but I'd love to also consider, all right, instead of just charging our residents more, we're going to do more snow removal over in this bu bucket than, and do less snow removal over in this bucket, so we're not actually charging our residents more. And I think in September, I'd love to see what are a few areas where we can maybe pull back service a little bit. I just don't think it's responsible to only be looking at how do we increase service or how do we keep service kind of the same but do it more efficiently. I think we've got a Cadillac service. We also should be asking, are there areas we're doing too much? Perfect. I think that motion is in order. I'll just check with Acting Director Johnson and, and Mr. Carroll that it's clear in regards to what the intent of the motion is. If you have concerns, please come up and address them so the, the, mo the motion could be amended. Uh, if there's something in particular you're looking, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Councillor Bressy. Yeah, and also one thing I really want to clarify is I was really careful on this to say with the report they're bringing in September. I know that there also is a public engagement campaign and I don't think it would be fair to say, hey, this engagement campaign you're about to launch this week, please come up with a bunch of things and do that this this week. So I just wanted to make clarify that this is the administration's final report, not saying, hey, you need to come up with this in the next two days to launch with your a winner's campaign this week. Mr. Carroll? Yes, uh, thank you through the mayor. Um, so I, 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 I take that you're wanting us to look um, at our operation, um, I guess it's trying to get a clarification as to what any particular area you're looking at or just our, uh, our snow removal operation in general or our hauling, plowing, service standards. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of ways we can look at uh, you know, reducing our, our levels of service. I mean, everything we do, we could, uh, we could reduce. So yeah. if there's a particular uh, 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 you know, point in our, our snow removal program that you feel that uh, we're going way beyond where we should, uh, we could focus our attention into that, uh, give us a little bit of focus. And Councillor Bessie? Yeah, and I mean, I just showed my cards on one. Personally, I think we haul a lot of snow on priority priority two roads, so that would be a top a top one for me. Another one is wh what would happen if we didn't have a, a, as quick a response on priority one, one and two roads? And I'm not saying we shouldn't have as much quick response, but I think maybe that is something we want to consider. Hey, we're going to spend less getting cars out quicker so that we can spend more getting people to the bus stop faster and so we can spend spend more on bike paths. So those would be the two, um, I don't know if I should say easiest. It's easy for me to say in this role, hey, those seem like the two easiest levers to maybe pull is uh, response times on priority routes and hauling on pri priority routes. And just be really clear, it's, I, I really am asking, I'm not just saying administration, hey, figure out how to just become way more efficient at snow removal, because I think you've done that over the last couple, couple of years. But it is if Council's okay taking the hit of, we know we're going to get some angry phone calls. Uh, where are a few places that we could potentially find savings? Because I think we should at least be considering those. Good, Mr. Carroll? I think, yes, yeah, through the mayor, yes. I think it gives us a little more a little more focus, and uh, we'll certainly bring back uh, some uh, some options and some numbers in the, the final report. All right, so I have a few in the queue for comments or questions on the motion. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, when I read uh, the first motion, uh, Snow and Ice Control Internal Service Review Report, uh, to me that encompasses what Councillor um, Bressy is talking about in that review to begin with. Is it not? Like, I, I'm not sure that you wouldn't include um, areas where you could improve, not necessarily with service, but with with uh, staffing and and dollar spent, is that so? I guess my point is: is this motion necessary if it's already included in your review? So I guess 
for Mr. Carroll in your interpretation, Mr. Carroll, um, did the report provide information that would in turn answer Council Bressy's questions? Uh, uh, through the mayor, um, we could probably pr provide a, a little more detail uh, in that direction uh, with, uh, with respect to, you know, as I said earlier, I mean, service reduction is always a difficult one because you know we're we're you know, it seems we're always striving to do to do, to do better, and uh, sometimes better you know maybe maybe saving money and saving money maybe through a service reduction. But uh, you know, the focus of uh, of our department through the years has always been to to do uh, you know get faster and do it better, and uh, and uh, you know uh, we we haven't as I said haven't. Uh, uh, delve too deeply down the the reduction road, but uh, certainly you, you've given us a bit of direction for some areas where you would like us to go. Uh, but uh, the, the, obviously, the, the the report is focused mainly on uh, establishing you know better timelines for uh, for our services, uh, uh, you know, to, and so that there's more predictability in in our service, so that people know when the plows are going to be uh, in their areas. That uh, focus more on that rather than. Uh, uh, you know, a, a specific section on on uh, on uh, doing less. Okay. Okay. For me, I guess this is early stages, so if there's more information, that's okay. Okay. So just a reminder: the motion is to see very specific additional information. Uh, so in the queue, I have quite a few of you, but uh, I would just suggest that your comments or questions be directed specifically as Councillor Bressy's motion. Um, indicated what he's looking for additional information on. Councillor Berg. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. So I'm okay with more information. I'm not interested in lowering, lowering standards. So the big question that I actually have around this um, is I see budget and spending as two separate things. Um, so I guess uh, the big question is have we exceeded our snow removal budget at any point over the last five years? So I'm happy to put that to Ms. Whiteway or Mr. Carroll if you'd like to it, or I could tell you my opinion of it. <laughs> Ms. Whiteway. All right, thank you, Mary Clayton. So we had prior actually had a reserve for uh, covering any, any times that there was uh, additional snow clearing requirements above and beyond budget. Uh, because we actually hadn't accessed that for many years, it was actually dissolved and included in the financial stabilization reserve. So no, it's not uh, common. Now this year is a year where we are anticipating potentially one extra round will be required compared to budget. Okay, so then I guess my, my question is, are we budgeting too high as opposed to spending too much? Go ahead, Ms. Whiteway. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, so no, um, just to clarify, I think that we are on par with budget. We're not needing to, we're not going over historically, um, so we're not spending more than budget, um, but we're also not seeing significant savings in, um, in comparison to budget either. So we've been fairly accurate in budget uh, in what the cost of one snow clearing does um, cost us, and as well as the number of rotations. Great, thanks, and I think you guys do a great job. And if I can just add to that, the only thing I would say there are in the policy triggers that, you know, sort of uh, initiate snow removal. So it's not like there's a bucket of money we plan to spend. It's all driven on criteria. So, uh, Councillor Blackmore. Um, I will support this motion because I feel that it's fiscally responsible to look at both sides of the equation, uh, no matter what you're doing. Um, so um, I think we need the information, but I am fairly sure that I'm not going to want to reduce services, even though that would reduce costs. Um, in a perfect world, you could reduce costs and give me more services, and that would make us all really happy. Um, but, uh, and I'm sure that you uh, have tricks up your sleeve, short sleeves though they are, that you could manage that. But, um, but I do think it's fiscally responsible to look at both sides of the equation. So I will support the motion. That. Councillor O'Connor. Uh, thank you, Mayor Clayton. And uh, uh, I think uh, Gladys uh, 
Councillor Blackmore has stated it uh, quite. We need to look at both sides. However, I think the administration has done an excellent job at trying to look at how to improve service, and this report and this review is looking to do that. So um, I'm not sure how I'm going to vote on this. Uh, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. Um, I'm going to take the opposite approach. I think I'm not going to support this motion. I'm similar to Councillor Berg, where um, I don't want to reduce like the, the service level. I like the standard that we have. We've gone this way before with our windrows, and we had our three meters of snow in, in six weeks. I imagine that Councillor Bressy isn't saying we've got to you know, leave the snow on such priority two roads like Royal Oaks Drive or Crystal Lake Drive or Mission Heights Drive or Poplar Drive. But what I do find driving around a lot of neighborhoods uh, in the community uh, is that when our method of doing the, the snow removal is right now we plow a lot of things either to the center or to the sides where there's room, but mostly to the center in residential areas where we'll go through later and pick up that snow. Uh, I think Country Club's a good example of that where it all gets plowed to the center, then you have your two lanes that are separated by a windrow and then you go from there. I think my concern is is I want to be fiscally responsible but I also, I also want to promote safety too on our roads. And I've seen lots of cars go zigzag just because they hit a little rut on a windrow. And I'd hate to leave those there for more of those little cardings to happen throughout the, the course of a year. So I'm, I'm all for information. I'm also, I'm also very proud of our, of our transportation department and the service that they have done. Of course, it could always be better. It's not perfect, but uh, I mean, who can predict the weather? Not even the weathermen, right? So, I mean, they're already at a disadvantage. So, uh, I may be the outlier here, but I'm not going to support this motion, and I look forward to the public engagement sessions to see where it goes from there. All right. Councillor O'Toole. I'll let you close in a sec here. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, I, too, am not looking at reducing what the city's doing right now. Uh, in the last 10 years, we've had an annexation where the city... <laughs> City got a little bit larger, and we've been very successful at doing a good job there. And uh, but I'm going to support the motion to get a report and uh, see what it says. But uh, if it goes any further than that, I'm still not inclined to reduce our services. Thank, Thank you. you for that. I'll just jump in the queue before I go to Councillor Bressy to close. I will support this motion. I think that it's uh, our. Um, our job to find efficiencies and support administration's initiatives. This motion will uh, encourage administration to come back with opportunities that may not have been addressed in the initial report. And as Councillor Blackmore said, uh, if there's a way to be more efficient and at lesser cost, that would be a huge win. So I will support the motion and I'll go to Councillor Bressy to close. Great, thank you, Mayor Clayton. I just want to be crystal clear on something that I've heard a few say. A few have said we don't want to reduce snow removal, and I absolutely don't want to reduce snow level, I snow removal in our community. I absolutely hope that come next winter after we've gone through this process where we've got better snow removal than we have today, and that probably means we're spending more total money on snow removal than we're spending today. But it strikes me that there's two ways to improve a service that's this big and this complex. You can add more money into it, or you can reallocate money in that service. And I think we probably have to do both of those things. On the report we're asking administration to do public engagement with, if I'm doing my math right, there's about there's a potential of about $4 million in new costs in that report. Well, what happens if the public says, hey, you need to do all of those? The council says, hey, we need to do all those $4 million. Or what if we say, hey, we need to do all $2 million of those? Well, maybe that means we need to find $4 million of new tax rev revenue. Or maybe that means we need to find $4 million worth of cuts in other city services. Or maybe we can find $1 million from tax increase, $1 million from city services, and $1 million from reallocating within the snow removal budget. Just For me, it's not about reducing snow removal services. It's make sure that the money that we're giving snow removal, which I don't want to decrease that envelope, but make sure that all the money in that is being put towards the highest priority areas in our community. So I just see this as... Not how do we spend less or how do we spend more on snow removal, but also how do we per make sure that everything's properly allocated within snow removal. So I just think it's important to look at shuffling money around, not just increasing spending. So I hope that council will support this motion. Great. Thanks for your close, Councillor Bressy. I will call the question. Mayor Clayton votes in favor.
Councillor Blackmore votes in favor. And that is carried seven to two. I will now move on. Uh, Councillor O'Connor, did you have any highlights from your meeting? Be great if I turn my mic on. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Clayton. Uh, highlights, economic development, congrats to 13 new businesses. Uh, and the administration is hosting a mixer for health and wellness services this week on June 16th at the Four Points from 4 to 6 p.m. And I encourage everyone that's listening, come on out and, sorry. Sorry, that's an opportunity for a session with health and wellness uh, representation from our community to meet with council and administration. Okay. Not well, a public wide event. It's not a public wide, oh. Oh, there you go. I'm buying trying to, beer, yeah, I'm buying the beer, obviously. Okay, well, I'll change that then. Um, uh, business re One business revitalization grant was issued, two training, training grants were issued, and Energy and Environment Administration has par partnered with the Mighty Peace Watershed and uh, Northwest Polytech in a research pro project on the Pinnacle uh, West Storm Pond and uh, pads will be in place to monitor algae and for the summer and uh, street uh, cleaning is on its way and should be done by the end of June. And uh, that's my report, thank you. Thank you so much. Moving on to item number nine under correspondence, item 9.1. In your uh, package, you will see council, um, the Chamber of Commerce sent uh, a letter to me in support of our resolution going to FCM. I just wanted to um, bring it to your attention um, and just so that you're aware that we are not only receiving um, support from other municipalities, we're hearing on a continual basis of interest in this resolution. Um, now we're getting support from our local Chamber of Commerce, which supports over a thousand members. So that was a great uh, piece of correspondence. And in that as well, um, I have had discussions with Reeve Beaupre and she will bring be bringing it forward to the Rural Municipalities uh, Association for consideration at um, their discussion, at their conference as well. So just uh, item of correspondence for your information. I'll just check, would you like that received or are we good? Okay, moving on to delegation business. Uh, there was no delegations today, no notices of motion, and we will not be taking a recess as we are gonna do a round table and adjourn for tonight. So I remind council, if you have opportunity, uh, please update us on any outstanding um, items that weren't addressed tonight from standing committees or, sorry, community committees that you may sit on. And I will start with Councillor O'Connor tonight. Thank you, uh, uh, Mayor Clayton. Uh, had a, a great event in uh, Regina at Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Uh, made a lot of connections there and even some leads to attract some business to Grand Prairie. So I think that was uh, a huge success. And uh, attended uh, a Peace Library uh, System meeting and uh, online uh, meeting with the uh, Al Alta Board for Alberta trustees association meeting by Zoom the other day and uh, things are headed in the right direction. Thank you, that's all I have to say. Thanks so much, Councillor O'Connor. Councillor O'Toole. Hey, that's me. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about uh, the committees. Uh, I'm on the Combative Sports Commission. There was an event held this weekend out at Evergreen Park and it's uh, totally 100% amateur. Uh, we did not need to be there according to our bylaws and the province stipulations, but we were there to give them some guidance because it was one of their first ones that they did. And uh, our team went down there to support them in an unofficial manner. And I can just tell you that uh, we will be seeing these people again. The group was called ICON and uh, they made sure that they were following all the rules to a T as well as we did as well. And uh, I'm I had a good talk with her today, uh, and uh, they're already planning for something in the near future, possibly in Grand Prairie, so rather than out at Evergreen Park. 
You wanted me to continue on with the roundtable aspect of it too, yep. please? Okay, so I was deputy mayor this last little bit, and uh, I know Mayor Clayton was extremely busy, and part of that kind of went into my hands as well. I got uh, a whole page of things that I attended. I'm not going to share every one of them, but uh, there was the, uh, oh, there's so many things here. I did attend the storm uh, golf or hockey team, uh, golf support tournament. Uh, I got to meet the new coach and I got to meet a number of individuals. And uh, you would think that this year coming out of COVID that the fundraising would be a little low and they got more than they anticipated for. So uh, I bought my fair share of mulligans. That's probably dropped things up. But my score was still terrible. Um, but uh, a couple other things. We did meet with Minister Shando uh, for about a half an hour over a team meeting. And uh, he had nothing but positive things to say about Grand Prairie. And I don't know where that goes, but uh, he had nothing negative to say to our conversation. And I did uh, give greetings at the Habitat for Humanity new home. And, uh, you know, if you haven't been to one of those uh, ribbon cuttings, you might say, it's pretty heart uh, quenching. I don't know how you would put it. It's just... It's one of those things that just brings so much joy to the people moving in that now they can get their life on in, uh, in order. And uh, it was a nice little house. It's over here uh, on the, uh, I forget the name of it now, the place. But it, just behind, uh, where was it? Yeah, on the west side of Royal Oaks. But anyhow, it was a lady and her son moved in there, and he was so excited. He says, uh, I got a place now that I can ride my bike, and it's safe, and I can uh, walk on the street because there's well lit, and uh, I'm, there's nobody living there that my age right now that I've met, but he says there's lots of space for houses to go in, and I'm looking to create some great friendships. So, you know, just hearing that young man change in his world and the comfort of his mother saying that uh, this was a big step for her, and uh, pretty positive. I can list and list, but I won't. Uh, we also attended the flag raising for the Philippine uh, Independence Day that was held here last Friday. And, uh, you know, there's another community that's so embraced in loving Grand Prairie. And uh, for us to recognize them and have their flag up, it did a lot of joy for us too. So. Uh, with that, it was Independence Day on Friday, but they celebrated all weekend. And uh, between cooking hot dogs and frying pancakes, uh, it was a pretty good deal. So with that, uh, that'll be my report. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for that. Councillor Blackmore. Yes, I did uh, quite a few things over the last two weeks as well. I uh, went I attended a Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Board meeting on behalf of Council. Uh, I'd like to remind people that the Rotary Bus Tour is running again. Uh, so if anyone wants to take the Rotary Bus Tour, which has been not running for a couple of years, uh, contact Tourism and they'll set you up with dates and times. Um, I also, uh, along with uh, Councillor O'Toole and Councillor Bosch, painted our handprints on the uh, street in front of the Grand Prairie Friendship Center to commemorate residential school survivors. It's one of my favorite crosswalks in town. It's on uh, 97th Avenue and 101st Street. So if you have a chance to walk, walk or drive by there and look at it, it's a fun, um, it's a fun crosswalk with a lot of orange handprints. Uh, I also spoke at the awards dinner for the Fast Swimming Fossils, which is the Masters uh, Swim Club in town. Um, it's kind of uh, Amusing to me that uh, when you're a swimmer, you're all washed up at age 20, and it can be a master swimmer from age 20 to, I think their oldest member is in her 80s. So that was a fun thing to do. Um, I attended uh, two of the seniors' events, the kickoff barbecue and the tea, and I was lucky enough, because I showed up late, to attend the tea as a senior rather than as a server, which that was fun. Um, I, I'm so close, so close. <laughs> um, 
And uh, another interesting thing I attended was the Beaver Lodge Art Walk. So they had an event uh, on the weekend. They called an art walk. It was really just a community gathering. They had some great food trucks. They had lots of uh, interesting art booths and crafts booths and uh, a beer garden and some great bands played all day long. They ran from 12 noon to 12 midnight. And it was a terrific event with great turnout. Uh, people are definitely trying to get out of their houses and uh, outside enjoying themselves now. And uh, um, I think that there was a lot more, but I think I will let uh, Councillor Grant Berg, <laughs> I want to call him Councillor Grant, uh, continue because I'm sure that he has a lot more things too. Perfect. Thank you for that. Councillor Berg. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. So I uh, was at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities uh, from the 1st to the 8th. I was down in Saskatchewan. That was my first event uh, of that scale, and I absolutely enjoyed it and learned a lot and came back refreshed. Um, I, I personally focused on cultural spaces, uh, taking a look at museums, stadiums, galleries, um, sports venues, uh, so many different places. Uh, took a couple of extra days and headed down to Moose John Assiniboia where, again, kind of continued that on on my own. Uh, ran into Saskatchewan's agriculture minister, which was nice. I believe he'd uh, been up here earlier in his youth. Um, and uh, for Councillor Thiessen, I think we have more advocates for more trees. Regina was beautiful. It was, you're flying in, and it's a very much a bald prairie, as you would expect, and flying in, Regina is an oasis of trees, beautiful boulevards, very mature. And so we had a lot of discussion around that as to how their climate can sustain uh, those trees uh, with their conditions and that, uh, you know, that might be something that we can emulate going forward too. So I think uh, we might have a handful more advocates for trees going forward. So uh, Regina was a great trip in southern Saskatchewan. It was my first trip down there and nothing but positives to say about the people and the communities around there. Uh, I did make it back in time to take part in the Pride Crosswalk painting, although I only painted about one or two square feet. Uh, it was just great to be involved with all those great people. And just, uh, I know it takes a team, but I do want to single out Erica Fisher and uh, Jonathan Clarkson uh, for the work that they do. So uh, hat hats off to everyone that was involved, but uh, those two I know personally, and I can see the hours and the dedication that they put into it. So thank you very much. Thanks for that, Councillor Berg. Councillor Thiessen. Look at that. She just skipped John. She likes his stand-up comedy to end before we get to the big cheese over there. Well, <laughs> my presentation today will be brought to you by the letter P, uh, P for Pride, P, P for Philippines, P for Parks, and all those trees that Councillor Berg was talking about because it is Parks Month, uh, and P for persons of elderly positions who identify as seniors. So uh, anyways, those are all the events that I took part in this past week. Of course, it was Seniors Week. Of course, it was Pride Month. Uh, of course, I did lots of walks through the parks. And I took in the flag raising of the Philippines on their first Independence Day, which is June 12th. Their second is July 4th. But they usually do the June 12th so they don't interfere with the American Independence Day, uh, as well as their, their Heritage and Culture Festival, which was very well attended down in Muscacipi Park. And most of these events I, in fact, uh, attended with all of council or most of council, so I won't single anybody out. Uh, but I will talk about two things that I did do um, that nobody was at except for myself, and that was on June 3rd. I uh, had to skip painting the crosswalk, which I really wanted to do for uh, the residential school children, uh, and I ripped out to Spirit River uh, to be a representative for Grand Spirit Foundation, the city of Grand Prairie, for a very long-awaited groundbreaking breaking of the new Pleasant View Lodge. Uh, that'll support uh, 92 seniors in their homes. 40 of them will be lodge settings. 52 will be uh, continuing care settings. Uh, so something that's very much needed in that community and that part of our region um, as far as people being able to stay in place and age in their community. So uh, it was it was very well attended for the groundbreaking. Uh, Mayor Kate Potter was there, as were Minister Pond to make the announcement, and MLA Todd Lowen was there as well. Uh, and just so happy to have that done. I know how hard our Grand Spirit Foundation Board worked to make that happen, including bumping it up in our priority. Uh, so that will be happening. It is being built, and hopefully we'll be cutting a ribbon here within a year or so. 
Uh, the other one was uh, I went out to, uh, on June 7th, I went out to Energy Junction, which is the Horse Lake uh, biochar plant, which was uh, an incredible project. Uh, I helped uh, Mayor Clayton like there for the groundbreaking. I think Councillor O'Toole is there back in September. Uh, and uh, it was nice to see the pile of dirt, but it was nicer to see the pile of dirt manifested into a giant like biochar plant and greenhouse that is spectacular. It's beautiful. And some of the things that they're doing there, some of the products that they're creating is biochar to feed into generators and into biofuels, as well as wood vinegar, which is really used uh, heavily in agricultural processes um, for reclamation, remediation, and all that other good stuff. Uh, also, one of the cool things about it is 100% water recycling plants. So they don't have any potable water that goes into the system. They use runoff water, rain water, and they have a dugout hole that they, they use that. And they use that to filter in algae to help filter out and sequester the carbon dioxide. So it's quite the project there. Um, it's, it's big, but it's small. And I think if we're dreaming, uh, what kind of scale we might be able to apply if we were to look into this business direction uh, for sustainability for the city of Grand Prairie, one that produces energy, one that by the end of the summer will produce food in their greenhouse, and will also produce lots of opportunity for new industry uh, of the ecological and environmental types as well as, um, well, it's just a good feel-good project. Uh, I had a good talk with Chief Ramona Horseman about other things too besides the plant. We talked about housing in the city and some of the land that Horse Lake owns here. We also talked about potential future partnerships. Uh, and yeah, she's just, a, she's just a good whip and had a bunch of good laughs with her there too. So there are plenty of opportunities coming out of Horse Lake. I was so happy to be able to attend that. And uh, according to Chief Ramona, uh, she said any member of council is more than welcome to drop by at any point uh, to check out the project for themselves. Just go past Hythe and turn left on Toop Road 740 and it is open to the public for your enjoyment. So thank you so much. That's my report. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, I'm going to just give a, a shout out to the Residential School Survivor and Victims Crosswalk Painting. I know Councillor Blackboard already talked about that, but that was the first time for me to do this. And although it was a fun activity, um, it was incredibly impactful uh, for the understanding value of why you're there and what you're doing. So um, that really stuck out to me, as did, um, you know, the pride um, crosswalk painting and the flag raising for the Philippines. So um, it, it's great, <clears throat> excuse me, to see um, the community come together. Um, I did attend one of the many stormwater utility consultations for the public and um, seeing some interest in there. I hope more people come out and, and check out this uh, potential program that, that may be rolled out. Um, we need to hear from, from the public and on what they're looking at and what they want. Uh, the Habitat for hum Humanity home, uh, that too was the first time for me. So um, that was like Councillor uh, O'Toole said, uh, very heartwarming. Um, I attended the local immigration and partnership uh, committee meeting and that was interesting. Um, they're a settlement organization which I don't think, and, and they self-identify that most people don't know what they do. So we have to do a, a better job of getting them, um, you know, recognized in our community. What was interesting to me that came out of that meeting was in, in that capacity in which they deal with, um, they are finding skill gaps with within a competitive market, they say, particularly in office business. And so... We're hearing a lot of, you know, everybody's screaming for for labor, yet in in their uh, you know pigeonhole of life, they're um, they're seeing gaps where that the competitiveness is is quite uh, difficult for for people that they deal with to get jobs, and additionally, um, the HR departments in companies are not having the ability to keep up with hiring and you know um, going through resumes and, and finding staff. It's just um, maybe there is a bit of a, a gap with HR in a lot of companies just trying to keep up with, with staffing. 
Um, Community Futures was another meeting I went to, and of course that organization is uh, incredibly active. There are probably, if not the uh, largest community futures organization in a province near one of the largest, so um, kudos to all the work that's being done there. Uh, my first time to the seniors tea for serving, so that was fun, and uh, pretty much, and I wasn't a senior, so I got to serve Gladys, so yay me. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually surprised to see you sitting. <laughs> She's a senior almost. Anyway, uh, it was a great couple of weeks and uh, fun to see everybody out with, with me and uh, doing other stuff. Thanks. Council Bressy. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. <clears throat> a few things where I was also at FCM, and I think one thing I really appreciate about that is there always is a really strong Alberta contingent there, and the leaders of all the major federal political parties always come and speak at that, and I really think it is significant that they know they're speaking to a room of Albertans at this conference where they really do seem to take it seriously and they really do seem to listen to FCM on many issues. So I think that, that representation of Alberta is really important so that our residents' interests are represented. The trade show was really good. It was great to get a few specific things that I think could maybe help some of our community processes in, and it was great to get to chat with those, chat about those with some of our directors. Uh, but it's always the hallway conversations at these that you learn the most. And two highlights for me was I had one conversation where I was with councillors and mayors from Metro Vancouver area, and they were all talking about issues they were having with painting rainbow sidewalks and with Pride Month and. They looked at me and they said, boy, up in Grand Prairie, you folks must really deal with this. And it was really great to say, actually, not really. There's, It's a non-issue in our community. Our community is very supportive. And I always love defying expectations of our community. Another interesting one was talking to Councillor White from Sarnia. And I had I didn't know much about Sarnia. I didn't realize how much it had to do, uh, how much it had um, and similar with Grand Prairie, they were the first oil well in all of North America, and they're a very similar community to us in a lot of ways. So it was very interesting to talk about how are some of the ways they're solving some of their problems there, having some good ideas, good food for thought. More locally, I got to go to Northern Alberta elected leaders last last week. Uh, Councillor O'Toole was there. Mayor Clayton brought greetings. But something that was really interesting was there was a lot of conversation about our distribution fees or energy fees resolution and a lot of support for that in that room so it's great to know that we're on something that really is resonating throughout the north not just us and that we've got strong support support on that over the weekend i didn't get to go to a lot of the festivities because i was busy ferrying my kids to one thing that i don't think the rest were at, and that was try it days always it's always great going around the city and seeing a whole bunch of new kids try new sports that they've never tried before and seeing how excited the parents are and seeing how excited the kids were so Really thankful that the city supports the sport connection so that that event can happen. It's really great for my kids and really great for hundreds of other kids. Then the last two things I'll just highlight for council board events I was at, but um, just heads up that I won't be around for mo most of the next two weeks because part of my Alberta municipalities tour or duties is we're going around the province to do leaders caucuses in towns around the province to hear what's going on in different communities. So I'm looking forward to my road trip over the next couple of weeks sharing stories from that. And then also just, um, not an event, but if council hasn't read it or a community hasn't read it, I'd encourage folks to read up a little bit about the tragedies that happened in Edmonton, Chinatown, and some of the information that's come to light there, because frankly, thank God it didn't happen in our community, because I think we've got a lot of the same challenges and deficiencies in our community that Edmonton is really starkly facing right now. So if you haven't read up on those, I would encourage you to do that. I think that is something that very much should be on our awareness as a council and our advocacy efforts. Thank you for that. Uh, it was just, um, yeah, so it was, a, it was a good week. Uh, I was glad to see that Councillor uh, Thiessen's week was full of peas and vinegar. And uh, so it, was, it kind of brightened my day. And I did happen to go to the, the biennial or seniors tea and I saw Gladys there and she didn't recognize me so it was probably appropriate that she was sitting down there because she's probably getting in that age so that's that's good to see um <laughs> she chose good. to ignore but chose to ignore me yes that's that's probably more spitting um yeah so I I guess I'll just focus a little bit on the on the FCM I was uh I also went to Regina it's the first time I'd ever been there and uh, really enjoyed it. Um, you hear a lot of different things, and so you get to set your own 
and a perception of how it was, and I, I, I share Councillor Burke's uh, perception that it's a it's a wonderful city, um, uh, very beautiful and very historical, and I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, there was lots of I always go to council or to these um, conferences and try and hope to pick up a few things, and uh, and I know uh, some of the uh, executive team that was there as well shared on this, and and I uh, there was some interesting stuff as the engineer in me to really like the. The capturing of some of this uh, wastewater heat off of our, our sewage systems and trying to, you know, instead of CHP systems that we have at, uh, in some of our facilities, trying to capture some of that potentially. I know they're doing that across the country and, and it's free heat and you don't need to, you know, use the natural gas that we're using. So maybe we'll I'll bug some people about that as we move forward. And, you know, they're doing subdivisions in that regard. And so, um, yeah, so there's some real neat potential if we're interested in working our way toward net zero. And then um, I think uh, Councillor Bressy pointed it out, and and I think uh, Director Tarrant, or, or um, not Director, but um, Mr. Tarrant was going to look at um, trying to explore some software that allows us to evaluate the economic impact of many of our, our events to accurately assess the value that we get, and so that we can in, you know encourage them in the proper direction. So um, again, met lots of interesting people, lots of interesting stories, and. Um, and encourage everybody next year who didn't get a chance or who wants to go um, to take advantage of that opportunity. And I will leave it at that. Thanks so much, uh, Councillor Lerners, for your brief report. I just, um, as mentioned by many people, it was an extremely busy last couple of weeks. Uh, I started out right after last council meeting. I wanted to uh, give a shout out to the comms uh, communications department for arranging a meet and greet with our local media, uh, we know that uh, in some of the smaller markets, sir, uh, we end up being a bit of a training ground for media. So sometimes the uh, people come and go rather quickly. And um, other than like people like Curtis, who uh, have dedicated their life to Grand Prairie, um, you know, many people come and go. So regardless, it was a great opportunity to meet um, our local media as well as uh, I learned that night that there will be a local representative from the town and country paper. So. Uh, which was a great uh, thing to learn. So thank you to the meet and greet uh, coordinators from the comms department as well as to all the media that were able to attend. Uh, in collaboration with the municipal, or sorry, the um, MD of Greenview and the County of Grand Prairie, um, we headed to Calgary to host numerous oil and gas leaders, um, industry leaders to update on things that are happening in the region. And it was a great opportunity to have discussions in an informal setting, a very informal sort of coffee break type uh, uh, format. And it was a great uh, a morning session for us to be able to do that. Um, also enjoyed uh, FCM and Regina and didn't have a lot of expectations for the municipality, but can agree with all those who mentioned it. It was a great city. and and learned a lot of great things, especially enjoyed the self-guided walking tour of the warehouse district. Um, there's a lot of history in Regina and a lot of great information was on that. So thank you to those who attended with me. Um, had the opportunity when first got back to proclaim Seniors Week and with many others, elected officials attended the Seniors Tea, which was very great. Um, lots of smiling faces and, and I know the seniors in attendance really appreciated the work that we were doing um, and serving them. Attended the uh, with CAO Nicolay the Global Energy Show, a couple sort of two different um, facets of it. One being our Economic Development Department, uh, in collaboration with the County of Grand Prairie and the MD of Greenview, hosted a booth that really um, was uh, extremely well attended. And anytime we stopped by the booth, there was great questions about the region. And it was, I, I want to say thank you to the Economic Development Departments for. Um, Putting the time in trade shows can be tiring, uh, but they truly uh, they represented us well. And then I had the opportunity to attend the strategic conference part of that, where um, CEO Nicolay and I had an opportunity to meet with many people interested in Grand Prairie, but learn a lot of reinforcing the things that we know as a council in regards to the opportunity in our region. So it was a, a great couple of days. Um, attended, um, wanted to. I attended the Sunrise and Odyssey House uh, golf tournament last week where uh, rough estimates of numbers uh, that it raised uh, approximately $100,000, which brings it back to the pre-COVID numbers for fundraising. So a uh, big shout out to the volunteers and the supporters of those two organizations. On the weekend, attended the Filipino basketball team barbecue at um, 
Freshco, thank you to the general manager, Jeff, really just a great community leader, early days in our community, but he's really been standing up to support the community. Also attended with Councillor O'Toole and Councillor Thiessen, the party in white at Bonnets Energy Center, so, sold out event at 700 people, uh, just a great event. And on Sunday, attended the Filipino Independence Day. With that, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Councillor O'Toole. Um, I was extremely busy in the last couple of weeks, and I can tell you which in turn made him extremely busy. So everything from flipping burgers to painting sidewalks to bringing greetings, Councillor O'Toole was there whenever I needed him. So thank you for that support. I truly appreciate it. And with that, I will call the meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.